Pastor Matthew Ashimalowo. The other is Pastor Poju himself, who was having an interview with Pastor Matthew Ashimalowo, where I got to hear of this conversation. People will raise a bottle of water as far as Sierra Leone. And when they drank, miracles happened. Healings. Leprosy disappeared. The question is, how do you prepare for these meetings? What do you do a few hours before the meeting? And as I was listening all the way to the wonderful conversations among these two, I heard him make a comment about a video I had looked at coincidentally before this video I'm making right now. So if you haven't watched this video, I think you might want to do so after this particular video. If you're watching me on YouTube, it's there in the pinned comment because I got to look at this woman who was paraventure three years ago used by different pastors to perform the same miracle gimmick where her hand has to be restored and all that which we looked at two videos in this same video looking at the asian version of it and as well the nigerian version now thank you for my lovely audience because someone in the comment precious james and a couple of people gave me a name or would i say a medical condition for what might be going on with her person but the story even gets more interesting because her person got to be discussed three years ago because of one person that was involved his name is dr chris okafo some of you know him already right now the one that um, jay israel went to his church and apologized for calling him a charlatan when you hear pastor matthew shimelowo talking about the same thing and calling the same people charlatans i think it's going to begin to make sense to you when i say that your pastors your man of god or whomever you look up to as whatever they know who is who they know themselves that here on social media like every other person they also carefully dichotomize themselves and define their associations as well like i always tell you relevance by association attention is currency let's listen to the interview of pastor matthew oshimolowo and pastor poju and I'll be back with a couple of comments. Um, okay, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Yes. Uh, now, at Wafbeck Conference, we have that's a conference, we do our annual conference. We have we have witnessed a good number of outstanding I mean, when I say outstanding miracles, outstanding miracles in your meetings. So the question is, how do you prepare for these meetings? What do you do a few hours before the meetings that 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 puts you in this space? One of the things that the rising generation needs to learn is to be hungry for the supernatural. I cannot forget one time Bishop Oedipo was telling me, because every time he wanted to be on holiday, he would come to London, I put him in the hotel. He's always joking that uh, it is when I put him in the hotel that he gets all these crazy inspirations, the idea of Canaan land, where the university would be, where the tabernacle would be. So one of those times we were talking and he said there was a season in his life and he was so desperate and so hungry for signs and wonders for the supernatural. So number one, there must be hunger. Matthew 5, 6, blessed that they would do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Number two, there must be a deliberate pursuit. And then number three, there must be actions and passions that confirm your hunger. When I'm coming to Wolfbeck, three to four hours to ministry, I shut down. I shut out everything. I want to hear God. I want to come there and when I stand on your platform, I want to, if I say there is a person here whose name is so and so, it is based on the fact that the Lord spoke to me. I want to know that he told me to pray for so and so health issue. These things are accessible. The challenge we have is that uh, even today's pastors are overwhelmed and inundated with all the current things around them. So the supernatural is possible. It is not uh, the exclusive of anybody, but there has to be hunger. There has to be passion. There has to be pursuit. And there has to be sacrifice. Sacrifice as in 
like I told you, four hours to that time, I shut out everything. And my driver and police who come with me know that once I'm going for a ministry, that's not the time the radio or music in the car should be on. Funny enough, when I finish go I want to hear all the jokes on the radio, you know. And uh, these guys on radio, I don't know which FM, for one guy is called the Don. Uh, they know I love to hear his jokes. Because it's not ministry time. You have to people need to see that you are truly natural. You are not so spiritual, you have no earthly use. And since you have asked this question, I am going to throw a controversial statement. My fear, which I see, <laughs> which I see, and which I, I shall just put it in a funny way. I don't care who gets angry. Uh, at this stage in my life and ministry, I don't need anybody's invitation. I fear for some young men in the land. I'll call them those my nice, yeah, lucky, charismatic kind of churches. They want to so appeal to the intellectual Nigerian that you have every Dick and Harry coming to speak on their platforms. They need to be careful. They need to realize that their churches are packed not because they can preach. When we went to Bible school, the grounds in Nigeria were not this soft. Mm. The spiritual ground in the land was not this soft. The biggest church in Lagos was Assemblies of God, Clerk Street, through Larry, 1,000 members. Ah, we we'll leave Bible school just to go and see the pastor and we'll be wondering. Is this man a human being or an angel? Is this guy a human being or an angel? The guy used to drive Volvo 244. Ah, even that time, self, it's like he's driving a Rolls Royce. That was the largest church in the whole of Lagos. But now some people have, they've touched heaven. The land is, is a fertile ground. There's a move of God. Do not ever think that it's because you are so smart and you have this great crowd. You now think, okay, let me appeal to their cerebral uh, capacity by bringing somebody who did economics on World Bank. It's great. It's okay. But please, let's only do those things once in a very, very, very blue moon. Okay, let me just add this. These young men and women, and I believe they are very good guys, because they are too much into this cerebral thing, we now have charlatans in the land who will be claiming the miraculous and they are just liars, faking it. I'm sure you heard of the lady whom they were passing to one another who will be dramatizing her arm because yeah. The nation wants to see the supernatural. They want to see the miraculous. But the young men who were born in the fire of genuine revival need to be very careful or else all these guys who are just who are just fakers of miracles. Who are who the, the book of Titus says their God is their belly. They become the ones that distract. They have, they have one in Anambra. People throw money at him in his service. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. You're the one who is this church. Anyway, that's not this. I'm sorry for digressing. All right. Now, you listen to them have a conversation right there, which Pastor Matthew was just talking about his fear for the country Nigeria. Now, I know some of you have reservations about him as well, Pastor Matthew. Now, I wouldn't be surprised that many of you are going to say in the comments, oh, look at someone else calling another person a charlatan, and you'd have a reason to call him whatever names you would call him. For example, a video like this. Travel a lot, ministering so much. My ticket each year is like 35 million Naira ticket. This morning when I ask you to sow the seed, don't sit there looking at volume, look at value. I want you to give a hundred naira. No, a thousand naira, sorry. For every year you've lived on earth, I want you to give a thousand naira. So if you've lived on earth 35 years, 35,000. If you've lived on earth 60 years, 60,000. 
those people who stand on the right, those who are given a thousand dollars to the left, a thousand naira for every year you've lived on earth, to the right, those who are doing both in the middle, thousand dollars to the left, thousand naira for every year you've lived on earth, to the right, those who are doing both in the middle, get out of your seat, listen. You must be able to plug into a seat during these three days. Don't sit down. Those who are doing both in the middle, thousand dollars and a thousand naira for every year. Those who are doing one thousand naira for every year to the right, right, right. Okay, of course you know that when it comes to the money aspect and the prosperity gospel, it really thrives a lot in Nigeria. So when you look at his quote and unquote talk of his relationship with the person of Bishop Oyedepo. That is just your own problem to think about. So just look at the relationships, associations, and if you have been watching me over time, you know what I want to say, but I'm not saying because this is not the main subject of today's video.